The title of my sermon this morning is Intrusive Thoughts, OCD, and Brain Fog. <laughs> That's kind of a strange title. But someone turned in a request for me to preach on this, and I have no idea who it was. I, I, don't, I don't have a clue who, who turned in this request. But what I do know is that whoever it was, you're not alone. All right, if you have intrusive thoughts, you're not alone. All right, so look at Romans chapter 7, verse 18. So I thought this would be a good thing to preach. I thought it would be helpful because I said, if, you know, if one person's struggling with intrusive thoughts, I know probably other people are. Uh, something that probably we all struggle with. Look at Romans chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. For what he's saying, for, for I want to do good. Uh, a desire to do good is present within me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. So he's saying, I want to do good, but how to carry it out, I don't, I don't do so good. It's, it's more difficult. Look at verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. When he says I find then a law, what, you know what he's saying is just, this is just a natural law, like the law of gravity. Gravity is just a natural thing. He's saying it's just a natural thing that when I would do good, I find that I'm wrestling with the evil that's inside of me trying to prevent me from doing good. It's just a natural tendency. That's what it means by when he says a law. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. And that's what I want you to get. That's what I want you to underline. Please don't miss that. Miss that. Let me read it one more time, verse 23. But I see another law of my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So the reason why I had you turn to that chapter, because I wanted to point out, look, if Paul had a war going on in his mind, if Paul had constant turmoil and chaos and a war raging inside of his mind, let it not surprise you when you do. I don't think I have to convince anyone here who's tried to live for God, who's, who's tried to make a, a um, diligent effort at li towards uh, living for God. I don't think I have to convince you that there's a natural tendency, there's a natural pull in bend away from us. Oh, I'm sorry, bend away from God that occurs in our mind. It's just natural. That's why, that's why we sing that song, Come Thy Found. It says, prone to wander, prone to stray, prone to leave the God I love. Because we have this natural bend away from God right. in our mind and in our heart. Having bad thoughts, fighting with the flesh, trying to stay close to the Lord is a struggle, something that we will have to deal with for the duration of our lives. Yeah. Wrestling and warring in our mind. We have to deal with it to, for the duration of our lives. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2. I want to talk to you about three categories of intrusive thoughts. And then we'll talk about what to do to help with these intrusive thoughts. Even though there is a struggle, I believe you can't have victory over these. And I want to talk to you about how to get victory over these intrusive thoughts. I don't think you can ever arrive. There's always going to be that wrestle. There's always going to be that struggle. But I do believe you can have uh, somewhat victory over these intrusive thoughts. The first intrusive thought I want to talk to you today that many wrestle with is fearful thoughts. Fearful thoughts. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2 that you be not soon shaken in mind. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that 
day of Christ is at hand. Now, I had you turn there because one of the main ways you can be, uh, you can suffer from intrusive thoughts is to be shaken in your mind. Intrusive thoughts that are fearful in nature is something that a ton of people struggle with, especially in the form of anxiety. And let me just tell you something about these fearful, intrusive thoughts that I want you to be aware of. Unless the fear is of God, then all fearful thoughts are sinful. The only healthy fear is a fear of God. Unless it's a fear of God, it's sinful. Amen. See, in Revelation 21.8, there's this long list of people that are going to hell. Yeah. Long list of hell-bound sinners to include the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, adulterers, liars. Pretty bad list of people. Man, when you're talking about sorcerers, like people that are involved in witchcraft and worshiping the devil and murderers and doing abominable things, man, you're talking about some pretty bad people. Amen. But guess what's at the top of that list? Amen. Fearful. Amen. Fearful. Those are all people that are going to have their part in the lake of fire. And fearful is at the top of the list. And I'm sure many of you struggle with fear. I, I've even wrestled with fear on occasion. Let me give you some ways to deal with this sin, the sin of fear. Number one, it has to be recognized and confessed as sin. So many people don't even realize that fear is sinful. Fear is wicked. Fear is associated with a long list of just wicked, wicked people. Number one, it has to be recognized and confessed as sin. Amen. You're never going to deal with these intrusive thoughts, uh, having your mind shaken with anxiety, panic attacks, and these fearful thoughts. You're never going to be able to deal with it unless, number one, you can diagnose it as sinful. Amen. It has to be recognized. It has to be diagnosed. It has to be confessed as sin. Amen. Number two, you must realize that fearful thoughts are not of God. It's sinful, and it's not of God. Do you know that most anxiety and fearful and truths of thoughts can be easily overcome if you just remind yourself that the Bible says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You have to rebuke those intrusive thoughts and recognize this is sinful, this is not of God, and if it's not of God, then it must be of the devil. Amen. <clears throat> this is something that can grip us, and it has to be recognized and rebuked. Some of you have heard this story, but recently I had to deal with some serious anxiety, some serious panic, like anxiety attack. And just panic and fear, and, and recently I had to overcome it. Back in May, I got a certification to uh, inspect cranes. And <clears throat> it didn't bother me to climb them up, climb up and operate them. But well, it did. I, I finally got you. When I first started doing it, that did that even bothered me a little bit. But then I got used to it. But I said, man, there ain't no way I can go 240 feet out to the tip of this thing and inspect the point shiv and make sure all the keeper pins and everything's hooked up properly. There ain't no way I can do that. I got to get in this little basket and ride all the way out to the tip. And I kept psyching myself up. I had my wife pray, and I kept psyching myself up. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I climbed up to the top of that thing, and I said, no, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> and I was going to call my ball. I, I mean, I came that close to calling my boss and telling, hey, I'm sorry. I can't do it. you got to get somebody else to do it. But then I said, this is not of God. 
This is the devil, and I rebuked that thought, and I said there's no way that I'm going to let a bunch of unsaved, worldly people have more faith than I do. I rebuked it, I sucked it up, I dealt with it, I recognized it as sin, and I dealt with it, and now it doesn't even really faze me anymore. Now I get out, man, I take my harness, I hook my harness into it, I climb all over. Don't even bother me anymore. <clears throat> Look, when you're going in for a surgery, or when those fearful, intrusive thoughts flood your mind, you have to say, get behind me, Satan. Last time I checked, Jesus Christ is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, He's still on the throne. He hasn't fell off the throne. He's still large and in charge. Last time I checked, the Bible said, all power was given unto Him. And if anything bad happens to me, it's for my good and it's for His glory. And if I die, ultimately, guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be doing the moonwalk on streets of gold, baby. So what difference does it make? Amen? What difference does it make? Some of y'all didn't know I was a break dancer, did you? <clears throat> Turn to Psalm 64, verse 1. Psalm 64, verse 1. I, I want to show you a truth that will change your life. Some of you that struggle and wrestle with fear, I want to show you a truth that will change, absolutely change your life if you'll get a hold of this. This will help you deal with fear. The third thing that you have to understand about fearful thoughts are, is that the enemy can't hurt you, but fear of the enemy can cripple you. The enemy can't hurt you, but fear of the enemy will cripple you. Look at Psalm 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer, preserve my life from the enemy. Is that what it says? Preserve my life from the enemy. Fear of the enemy. Amen. Now why didn't David say preserve my life from the enemy himself? Because David had figured out long time ago that that dirty rotten egg sucker couldn't so much as lift his bony finger towards David unless God gave the nod. Yeah. David had that figured out. David realized that the devil couldn't come in his house and as much as breathe on him, unless the King of Kings and Lord of Lords allowed it. Amen. Wasn't worried about the devil coming in his house and messing with him. But guess what could come in his house? Guess what could find him where he lived? Fear. The devil couldn't cripple him, but fear of the devil, fear of the enemy could cripple him. Because fear of the enemy could find him where he lived. Find him where he was at. Look, I don't care how big a moat, how, how, how wide of a moat, how tall of a, a wall you make around your fortress. You, 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 you could put a, a complete dome over top of it to where the enemy can't get in, but fear of the enemy can still get in. And that can cripple a person. <clears throat> See, fear of the enemy can find you wherever you are, and it can grip you, and it can ruin your life. And I believe it probably has made some of your lives very miserable, this thing of fear. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. You must confess your fear as sin. You must rebuke your fearful thoughts as not of God, as of the devil. You must realize... Fear itself is the only thing that can actually get to you. Fear itself is really the only thing that can actually have a direct shot to you without running into some type of hindrances. Hey, if you love the Lord, if you fear the Lord, you got the angel of the Lord encamping about you. You got the Lord protecting you. You got the Lord watching after you. So no enemy's got a straight shot to you, but fear does. Fear of the enemy has a straight shot to you and it can cripple you. <clears throat> so number one, I talked about fearful thoughts. Number two, I want to talk to you about fleshly thoughts. I'm talking to you about intrusive thoughts. Things that we war with, things that we struggle with in our minds. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. 
among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and don't miss this, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. So the second type of intrusive thoughts are thoughts about committing sins of the flesh. Desires of the flesh and of the mind. <clears throat> Intrusive thoughts about committing sins of the flesh like fornication, adultery, being envious, hatred. Maybe you have intrusive thoughts about hating somebody, desiring to get drunk, desiring to smoke weed, whatever it is. You have these intrusive thoughts about the desire to satisfy your flesh. These are things that we should not even entertain. Just like we shouldn't entertain fear, you should rebuke it, you should cast it down. These are also things we should not allow to come in our mind. These are things that are going to want to come in your mind till you die. But when you sense them coming in your mind, you can't entertain them. You can't allow them to linger. Desires of the flesh, thoughts of the flesh, how you can commit... The sins of the flesh, you can't allow them to linger in your mind. <clears throat> you have to cast them down. You have to rebuke them. This would include things that you used to do before Christ. All right? Can't be dwelling and meditating and fantasizing and trying to go back to what you used to do before Christ. Look at Ephesians 4, 22. Ephesians 4, 22. That ye put off, underline put off, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Now conversation oftentimes in the Bible just means behavior. Put off the form, former behavior of the old man, the things which you used to do before you got saved. You're supposed to put that off, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So you're supposed to put off the old things, don't be dwelling and fantasizing and thinking and bringing up in the museum of your mind, the memory of your mind. Don't be thinking about those things. Don't be dwelling about your former behavior. You're supposed to put it off. <laughs> what does that mean? Turn it off. Extinguish it. Amen. Rebuke it. Get rid of it. Don't, don't allow it to linger in your mind. The things you want to do the things your flesh wants to do, or the things your flesh used to do. You have to extinguish it. <clears throat> See, when you start dreaming about things you used to do, or you start thinking about dreaming about things you would like to do that are sinful, you better realize you're on dangerous ground. You're on thin ice. Because you hear about these people that slip off into adultery. You hear about these people that fall off the bandwagon, start using again, start drinking again. Guess what they started doing first? They started entertaining it in their mind. <clears throat> James 1.15 says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Sin starts in the mind. When you start getting these intrusive thoughts, you better recognize them as sin. You better put it off. You better get it out of your mind. You better get your mind renewed. Amen. And look, a cure-all for all these thoughts is real simple. In addition to rebuking them, in addition to putting them off, extinguishing them, a cure-all for all these is real simple. Get you, get you what I call a little dagger. I mean, get you a dagger. Like this one right here. Get you a dagger, carry it around with you. This will cut thoughts out of your mind. Amen. You know, this is a sword. This is the Old Testament, New Testament. This is a dagger, amen. This is the little New Testament. Get you a little dagger, keep it around you, man. This will cut fearful and sinful thoughts. Read it out loud. Other things you can do. Brother Roloff used to say that preaching, listen to good, godly, hard preaching, listen to good, godly gospel music, will re renew your mind. That'll help you also. But fleshly thoughts can also intrude our minds by just the things that we desire. So fleshly thoughts can be sinful things that intrude our mind. 
things we used to do, or things that our flesh would like to do. But you can also have fleshly thoughts that aren't necessarily things that are sinful, but just things that intrude our mind and we can consume with. Uh, turn to 2 Corinthians 10.15. 2 Corinthians 10.15. Now while, you, while you're turning there, I'll read 2 Peter 2.18. Just listen as I read. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. So even just an excess of wanting things that aren't sinful can be an intrusive thought. <clears throat> Look, it's okay to have legiti a le legitimate desire for something. I'll give you an example. You can only fit so many kids in a Honda Civic. Amen. I bought my wife a Honda Civic. I called it her Mexican Mercedes. And man, you can only fit so many kids in there. Amen. You can only fit so many kids in there. <clears throat> we had to eventually buy a minivan. I had a desire for a minivan. All right, that was a legitimate desire. I prayed for it. God delivered it. You know, it's okay to have a legitimate desire for things. Maybe there's something that would improve your life or make your life more efficient and easy. You know, maybe it would like make your life more easy to raise, uh, you know, to feed your big family if you had some, an Instapot. Amen. Well, that's a good thing to have a desire for, man. Those things are very convenient. Get you one. Amen. Nothing wrong with desiring things. Maybe it's something you desire that you would like to enjoy as a hobby. Man, we all need hobbies. We don't have a hobby, something that's good. We may get into something that's bad. Yeah. Amen. I'm all about hobbies. I'm all about enjoying things. But what we have to be careful of is that we don't allow thoughts of things to intrude our minds to where they exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. In other words, we want stuff more than we want God. We can think about things. You can get to the point where you have intrusive thoughts that cause you to think more about things than you think about the one who made those things. <laughs> the one who allowed you to enjoy those things. This can also be a type of an intrusive thought. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 15, 10, 5. I'm sorry. No, I believe it's 5. It's second, it should be 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Yeah. Casting down imaginations in every high thing. Underline thing. Every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We can allow things to come in our lives to where we think about things more, <laughs> things exalt themselves against God. Things become competition with God. Everybody see that? And we're supposed to cast those down. We're supposed to bring those thoughts into cast. You're supposed to <laughs> control your mind. Amen. Thoughts can intrude our minds Way to, uh, thoughts of, I'm sorry, thoughts of things can intrude our minds way too much. And this is pretty self-explanatory what we should do with it. When we have these intrusive thoughts about things that have exalted themselves more than God, we're supposed to cast them down. Amen. Now, the first thing you have to do is recognize it. You can't rebuke it. You can't cast it down until you recognize it as being simple. You know, you have to realize, man, I've been way too focused on stuff instead of the Savior. Man, I've been out of balance lately. Way too focused on stuff instead of the Savior. You've got to take them down. And I will tell you why we struggle with an excess of wanting things is because we feed our desire. We feed that desire. I'll tell you why we struggle with fear. We feed the desire. We, we feed that. We feed our fear. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, Romans 13, 14, listen as I read. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Let me tell you something that would help your fearful thoughts. Let me tell you something that will help your fleshly thoughts. Don't feed it. Don't provide for it. Look, don't worry why you're so fearful at night. And you've bitten, you've chewed your nails down to the quick. 
Don't worry why you're so fearful all the time when you're watching criminal minds. Don't worry why you're so fearful all the time when you're watching America's Most Wanted. Don't worry why you're scared of zombies. When you've been watching, what's that show called? <laughs> you've been here long enough, bro. I figured he'd fall for that one. You've been here long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Walking Dead. Bobby said Walking Dead, all right? Don't be watching Walking Dead. <clears throat> and he probably just heard about it from work. I know he, he don't watch that mess, but uh, what's that? Yeah. <clears throat> but look, <clears throat> don't feed it. Don't feed whatever it is that you're struggling with. The, whatever thoughts are intruding your mind and flooding your mind, don't feed it. Look, when you look at pics all day about a speedboat, no wonder, when you gorge yourself all day at pictures of a speedboat, no wonder that's all you think about. No wonder that you, you go to sleep thinking about what speedboat you want to get. You wake up thinking about what speedboat you want to get. You can't sleep at night because you're thinking about what speedboat you want to get. <clears throat> Cast it down. Cut it off. Quit feeding it. So number one, we talked about fearful thoughts. Number two, we talked about fleshly thoughts. And now number three, I want to talk to you about thoughts that come from Satan. Talking to you about intrusive thoughts. Now I want to talk to you about thoughts that come from Satan. And what I mean by that is thoughts that are just straight out of the pit of hell. Amen. Look, not only is there this natural struggle in our flesh, in our mind, that's bent and just pulls us away from God that we constantly have to fight. We constantly have to read our Bible. We constantly have to push ourselves and make ourselves be disciplined when it comes to the things of God. So not only is this natural tendency that we wrestle with, but to top it off, I believe the Bible teaches the devil has the ability to interject thoughts in our hearts and mind. Shoot us with those darts, those fiery darts. He can interject those fiery darts. Now proof of this is in Acts chapter 5 verse 3. Don't turn there. You'd be familiar with the story. Just remember, <clears throat> but you remember when Peter was the pastor of that church in Jerusalem, he confronted Ananias and Sapphira about lying to the Holy Ghost. So I believe we're saved. I believe that's why God killed them, because he was dealing with them as children. He was punishing them as children and using them as an example for that early New Testament church. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So look, if Satan can fill your heart, you better believe he can fill your mind because the heart and mind are connected. Now, good news is if you've been sealed under the day of redemption, Satan's not getting through that seal. That's, a ta that's like a tamper seal, amen? amen. Satan, Satan can't indwell or possess a believer, but he can oppress them. And one of the ways he can try to get to believers is he can try to flood your mind with intrusive thoughts. Amen. Put darts Shoot your mind with darts. And the best thing to do here is to just know that even save people, even save people to love the Lord and walk with God can have super, super wicked thoughts. Super wicked thoughts. I remember one of my children at one point in time was struggling with the fact that they were having such bad thoughts in their mind. And they just, they just thought that they were just like some super wicked, evil person. And they were wrestling with it and struggling with it. But it's normal. It's normal for, for people to have some very wicked thoughts who love the Lord. So the best thing to do here is know that you even say people can have super wicked thoughts interjected and when it happens you just immediately confess it and you immediately say get behind me satan get behind me satan Amen. that's the best thing you can do is just get behind me satan <clears throat> so we talked about recognizing fear as being sinful and not of god we talked about not feeding thoughts that are fleshly we talked about recognizing thoughts that come from satan just knowing it can happen, and when it happens, you confess it, you rebuke it. Now, in addition to those things, I want to quickly give you five more tools you can put in your tool bag on how to deal with intrusive thoughts. Just quickly, I'm going to hit these things, but I've got to hurry up. 
I'm going to hit these things super quick. I'm going to go through. I'm going to give you five quick tools to put in your tool bag or your toolbox to help you with these intrusive thoughts. Number one, stay busy. If you're the type of person that wrestles with your mind, wrestles with thoughts, you have to stay busy. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It says, gird up the loins of your mind. What does it mean to gird something up? When you gird something up, what you're doing is you're tying it up. It's not loose. So when something's not girded up, what is it? It's loose. It's open. So what is it that you need to do as a believer? You need to make sure you tie your mind up. You, your mind's just not loose, just running all over the place, just idle. You're not leaving yourself to your own devices. <clears throat> Don't allow your mind to be loose. You stay busy. Proverbs, listen to Proverbs 16.3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. God wants you to have your thoughts established. Amen. He wants you to have your mind gird up. And, <clears throat> you know, one of the best ways to, to gird your mind up, one of the best ways to establish your thoughts is to commit your works to the Lord. Do you realize that if people would start, if people would serve the Lord and go soul winning every week of their life, and pass out tracts every day of their life, people they run in contact with, people they meet every day of their life, if they would give out tracts, did you realize that Big Pharma would go bankrupt? I really believe Big Pharma would go bankrupt. You know, much of Big Pharma's proceeds come from psychotropic drugs, like Prozac, this kind of stuff. Large percentage of their, their income is these psychotropic drugs. And <clears throat> if people would just go out and soul win and live for the Lord and serve the Lord and be faithful to church and pass out tracts every day, you know what they do? They could dump their stinking Prozac out. They could tell the doctor, hit the road, Jack, I won't be back. Amen? Amen. Not coming back. Tell, they could tell that, that quack psychiatrist to hit the road, Jack. Amen. You show me someone who stays depressed, I'll show you. And notice I said stays depressed because all of us can get depressed. Even the greatest men of God ever lived like Elijah can go through periods of depression. You show me someone who stays depressed or is constantly wrestling with depression, I'll show you someone who lets their mind get idle and doesn't stay busy. And not only that, I'll tell you someone who doesn't soul win. Yeah. Not passing out tracks. Not busy. Not busy serving the Lord. You got to stay busy. If you're struggling with your mind, you got to stay busy. Stay busy for the Lord. And when you're not staying busy for the Lord, stay busy, busy in some other kind of way. I think about my grandmother. Many of you heard me talk about my grandmother a lot. I can't even remember. She's 95, 96. I can't even remember. Do you remember Gloria? She's up there, buddy. <laughs> and I've never seen my grandmother depressed in my life. Now, I'm sure she has been, but I've never seen it. I'll tell you one of the reasons why I believe I've never seen her depressed, why she's such one of the most happiest people you ever meet, even in her 90s. It's because she, never, she is never idle. I have never seen my grandmother idle. I even lived with her for a while. And she watches TV, and I don't promote TV, but she lives all by herself. She watches TV. She, I guess you know, she wants something, uh, you know, some noise, <laughs> I guess. But, you know, so she watches TV. But do you know I've noticed when she does sit down and watch TV, you know what she's doing? She's shelling butter, butter beans. She's picking pecans, never idle. My granddad made a thing where my granddad was like MacGyver. And he made a thing that had these paddles in it that would shell butter beans and shell pecans. My grandma will go around town and find all the pecan, pecan trees and she'll pick up, uh, we say pecan in North Carolina, y'all see pecan here. But anyway, she'll go find all the pecans and she'll crack them 
my grand, put them in my granddad's contraption he made, and it'll, the paddles will crack them, or shell butter beans, and she'll just sit there watching TV, picking them out. And she'll give bags, gallon bags of them away for Christmas presents. Always doing something, picking crab meat. She'll crack crabs and pick the meat out so she can make crab cakes, peel shrimp, something. I've never seen my, never seen, if my, the only time my grandmama's idle when she's sleeping. Always doing something. And I'll tell you, I believe that's why she doesn't, she's, I've never seen her depressed. Hey, if you're having problems with your mind, stay busy. And one of the best ways you can do that is, is do more work for the Lord. So number one, stay busy. Number two, stay your mind on Christ. Listen to Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah, you need to write this down if you struggle with your mind. Isaiah 26, 3. That will keep him in perfect peace. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Now turn to Colossians 3, 15. Colossians 3, 15. You want perfect peace, you're going to have to keep your mind stayed on Christ. I hope you didn't think that I was going to give you a magic pill this morning. <laughs> hope you didn't think that, you know, uh, just tell you some easy fix for this thing. It is, it is easy. It is simple. The antidote, the cure for sinful, intrusive thoughts is to stay your mind on Christ. Amen. Get your mind on Christ. How do you do that? Pass out tracts. Tell people about Him. Go soul winning. Saturate with the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God. Sing songs about Him. Keep your mind stayed on Christ. Look, when you're telling people about Him all day, I mean, I'm sorry, every day. When you're telling people about Him every day, every day you're running into somebody. You're giving out cards. Every day you're driving on the road, you're listening to Alexander Scorby. Every day you're, you're listening to gospel music. Every day you're getting saturated in the Word of God. Your mind's going to be stayed on Christ. You're not going to be struggling with your thoughts. So number one, stay busy. Number two, stay your mind on Christ. Number three, start praising Him out loud. Colossians 3.15. Look at Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Hey, you want to have peace in your heart? Don't forget your heart's connected with your mind. So if you want to have peace in your heart, in mind, let's keep reading. To the which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. So if you want the peace of God in your heart, in mind, instead of those intrusive thoughts, when they start, when you start wrestling and doing battle and warring your mind, you get somewhere by yourself in your vehicle, on your walk, and you start praising the Lord out loud. Amen. Start praising Him out loud. Lamentations 3.21 says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. You need to praise out loud and recall to your mind how good God is. Amen. Sometimes, man, I'm just struggling and just wrestling with Things I'm struggling with and wrestling with in my mind, and I'll just driving down the road or on my walk, I'll just start praising out loud. God, I'm struggling with this. God, I'm wrestling with this. God, I'm dealing with this. But God, I just want to praise you, God, that I'm not gnawing my tongue out, gnashing my teeth as I'm falling in a bottomless pit, God. Thank you for saving me, God. Thank you for cleaning me up, God. Thank you for everything you've done in my life, God. Thank you for changing my life, God. I'm only where I am today because of you, God. Thank you for my family, God. Thank you for my great church, God. Thank you that I'm not in a cult, God. Amen. Thank you that my biggest problem in life was a hell problem, and you've taken care of it, God. Amen. Thank you, God, that I've got a house, and I've got vehicles, and, and Lord, I've got hot water. I could take a shower this morning in hot water. Thank you, God, for putting up with me. Thank you, God, that you hadn't squashed me like a little bug. And you've had plenty of opportunities too, God. Thank you for putting up with my mess at times, God. Thank you, God. You're a good God, and you just got to start praising Him. You just got to do it out loud. Who cares if the person driving beside you on the road thinks you're crazy? <laughs> Who cares if you walk into your neighborhood and people are turning on the lights and... Uh, Getting the dog out and everything else. Just praise Him. Amen. You just got to praise Him out loud. You want to counter those thoughts? You want to fight those thoughts? You want to beat down those thoughts? You're going to have to just start praising the Lord. You just got to have to learn to praise Him. Look at Colossians 3, 16. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. <clears throat> that brings me to my next point. Point number four is sing. In addition to praising the Lord, sing to the Lord. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you. There's been times in my life where I've been struggling and wrestling so bad in my mind and I just felt so beat up, I didn't even feel like singing. I didn't even feel like singing, man. I, I, I felt like I'd lost my song almost. <clears throat> and so what I did was I listened to someone else sing. <laughs> now I've heard this downplayed. I don't know why. But I've heard this thing about, like, it's almost wrong to listen to somebody else sing. Like, the Bible commands you to sing unto the Lord. Yeah, but sometimes you don't feel like singing. <laughs> Anybody else ever been there with me? You don't even feel like singing. And there's a saying in the Bible called Levite, Levitical men and women singers. So, and there's this thing in the Bible where Saul was helped by listening to somebody else somebody else's music so it must be something to it all right it must be something to it i know it's helped me <clears throat> because i've been so down i felt like i lost my song i listened to somebody else sing and it rubbed off on me <laughs> yeah. amen it rubbed off on me help me get my song back That's right. <clears throat> so one thing you can do is listen is sing or if you don't feel like singing listen to somebody else sing keep you some good gospel music man Get you a good app on your phone where you can listen to some uh, good gospel music. All right, number five, last, last one, serve someone else. So I said, these are just some tools for you to put in your tool bag. Stay busy, stay your mind on Christ, start praising out loud, and then serve someone else. And let me just say this, talking about staying your mind on Christ. If you don't have you one of these little pocket New Testaments, get you one. Or get you an app on your phone where you can read it on your phone. I, I don't like reading on my phone as much as I do having one of these actual Bibles because I can go in here and highlight and underline stuff. And uh, sometimes I pull my phone out, man, and I want to start texting and you know checking my emails. And that's the last thing I need to do. I need to get in this. So, man, I like having a real deal, legitimate. And we got some back there on that shelf. Some of you that struggle with intrusive thoughts, uh, seriously. You need to get you one of these. Keep it in your purse. Keep it in your shirt pocket. Keep it where you can get to it. We got some back there to King James. These are some little Gideon Bibles Brother Alex gave us. We appreciate uh, him bringing them in. But the fifth point is serve someone else. If you're struggling with intrusive thoughts, you need to get your mind off of yourself. You need to get your mind off of your problems, and you need to serve someone else. Uh, Philippians 2.2 2 says, Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, if you turn there, you can look, jump to verse 4. If not, just listen. So he says, fulfill ye my joy. Now he's fixing to tell you how you can have that joy. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? What mind is it supposed to be in you that was in Christ Jesus? It's the mind where you uh, look after, you uh, don't just worry about yourself all the time, but you're worrying about others. You're taking care of others. You're helping others. You're serving others. Let me tell you one of the cool things about being a pastor, what I got to do this week. <clears throat> one of the coolest things about being a pastor is I got to take a credit card this week, and I got to take some of your money that you gave to the Lord, and I got to go out one night this week and go to Costco and buy a bunch of groceries for a family who was struggling, a time of need in our church. Amen. Guess what? That helped me more than it helped them. Yeah. I know they appreciated it. I know they're thankful for it. I know they enjoyed it. But it helped me more than it helped them. Because yeah. it got my mind off the of things I'm dealing with. Got my mind off the of things I'm struggling with. Got my mind off the of things I'm wrestling with. Well, at least I'm not in that situation. <clears throat> I 
One of the best things you could ever do is go serve somebody. Find somebody in here struggling. Take them out to dinner. Drop them off a bag of groceries. Help them. Love them. Serve them. Look, the closest thing to a magic pill, there is no magic pill for this, these intrusive thoughts that we struggle with. People oftentimes want the easy way out. They just want, instead of going out and working out and restricting their diet and not taking in as much calories and burning calories and working out and sweating and walking and jogging, they just want to take a pill. Well, I'm going to tell you, there is no magic pill for these intrusive thoughts. But you can have victory over them. The closest thing to a magic pill is you just stay busy. The closest thing to a magic pill is you just praise Him. You just have a praise session. The closest thing to a magic pill is you peel back the pages of this testament and you read it out loud. The closest thing to a magic pill is you put someone else uh, before yourself and serve someone. Now if that doesn't help you, you do all those things and you're still struggling with intrusive thoughts, I will give you a $100 bill. And Brother Pill will give you one too, amen. Brother Pill said he'd give you one too. <laughs> all right. Now, I quickly, I just want to touch on this OCD stuff. You know, I was asked about OCD, brain fog. I know more about the brain fog than I do OCD. I'm just going to tell you my opinions on OCD. This is just my unresearched opinion on some of this OCD stuff. Uh, I believe all probably have a touch of OCD. <laughs> Obsessive compulsive disorder. Look, all of us got quirks about us. All right? I have a family member of mine that used to do everything in threes. He just had this thing about him. He, he'd go, go in a room and turn a light switch on. He had to do it three times. He'd turn it off. He had to do it three. He'd turn, turn it off three times. Just... You know, some of you got, got, got are OCD about hand sanitizer. Every time you touch something, you got you to use some hand sanitizer. And that's it's really about good for you, anyway. Hand sanitizer's got a lot of chem, some chemicals in it. And it's not good for you. But everybody's probably OCD about something. Everybody's probably got a little touch of something, all right? I do things that probably some of you would consider weird. We all do, all right? So the point I'm trying to make is this. If you think you got OCD, you don't need medicine. Practice the things that we've already talked about, and it'll probably work itself out. You'll quit being so fearful about all those germs, because <laughs> you know fear is, a, is sin. All right? So, uh, and most of that stuff, you practice these things that I'll talk to you about, all this OCD stuff will work themselves out. You know, they, they want to, all these doctors want to say, oh, you're OCD, you're ADD. All they want is your money. All they want <laughs> is for you to pay for their vacation and keep paying for their mansion. Look, I'm pretty sure that if I had grown up in the 2000s, you know, when they first started really throwing out Ritalin and all these ADD, I'm pretty sure somebody would have said I was ADD. I'm pretty sure I would have been on some Ritalin as a child. But look, that's the way God made us. You know what, you know what Ritalin does oftentimes? It hinders creativity. God made these, some of these kids that way for a reason. They don't need Ritalin. All right? They need, most of the time, they just need a good spanking. They need to just be taken off the red food coloring and the, 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 the sugar, the high sugar diet. And give them some good protein, some fat, some eggs, and you know, some butter and some stuff like that. It'll kind of calm their brain down a little bit. Just allow them to be who God made them. <clears throat> a lot of OCD people and a lot of so-called ADD people are very creative. All right? You don't need drugs for that kind of stuff. Now, as far as the brain fog goes, and the only reason why I'm talking about these things is because these were specifically things that were requested. And I knew a little bit about the brain fog issue, so I figured I would help someone, help, try to help you with that. <clears throat> brain fog is, is a serious thing that people struggle with in our day and age. Now, one reason is because blood sugar issues. 
Again, I'm not going to give you any magic pill. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to modify your diet if brain fog is something you struggle with. One of the things is if you can learn how to just stabilize your blood sugar. But the biggest contributor of brain fog in our society is this thing of excess histamine levels. Excess histamine levels. Again, this is very common. It's probably more common now than any other time in history. This is something I've done extensive research on because this is something that I have struggled with myself as a result of some of the Gulf War type related syndrome that I, that I, that I, that I struggle with. One, one of the side effects is brain fog. It's something that I have, have struggled with. And here's, why it's, here's what it's from. Here's what, here's, what, here's what causes this brain fog. Excess histamine levels. Probably everybody in here has elevated histamine levels. Now, let me explain this to you real quick. We've got a few minutes. Histamine is a, uh, a hormone that is needed in your body. I believe it's a hormone. It's a chemical. It helps regulate brain function, digestion. It's a needed resource in your body. So pretty much think of it this way. Everybody's got like a bucket inside of their body. And as long as your histamine levels stay in that bucket, you're good. Histamine is also used to deal with allergic reactions. So the reason why so many people in our, our society struggle with brain fog is because everybody's buckets are pretty much already full. They're full of mercury because you, you, we've got mercury from vaccinations. We've got mercury from amalgam fillum, fillings. We've got fluoride. We've got issues uh, in our bodies with overgrowth, uh, overgrowth of yeast and candida. Yeast and candida that most have overgrowths of because of antibiotics produce and release histamines. So your buckets are already full. My buckets are full from all the vaccinations and all the chemicals I was exposed to in the military. So now, if I, I had, one of the things I have to do is I have to, I have to follow a low histamine diet. Because my bucket's already almost full of all this toxins and stuff. So now when I start eating foods that are rich and high in histamines, now things start spilling over. Now you start having reactions. Now you start, one of the, one of the symptoms of excess histamine levels is brain fog. So what you have to do is you just have to Google low histamine diet. You got to follow it. That's what's going to help your brain fog. I know because I've something that I've experimented with, and that's what works for me. Just to give you an example of foods that are high in histamines would be like saw aged meats, sausages, cheeses, coffee, chocolate. You know, some things that are uh, you have to eat more fresh stuff. So those are some things that would. I promise you that'll help you if, if you're struggling with brain fog and concentration. That will help. That will improve your brain fog if you just try to maintain your, uh, your blood sugar. Don't spike your blood sugar by eating a lot, a lot, too many carbohydrates at one time and sugar. And then, you know, you eat more fat and you stay on a low histamine diet. I promise you that will help your histamine, your brain fog. Well, I hope that was a help to you. Again, I, I wanted to be a help. That's why I preached this sermon this morning. I, I felt like I should preach it because I felt like, if somebody here was struggling with intrusive thoughts enough to, to ask for a sermon, I would imagine there's a lot of people. And it's something I struggle with, too. So I was like, well, you know, I could help myself as I'm trying to help you. So I hope that was a help to you. Let's pray.